In this video, we will make all necessary preparations for outdoor photo, including building the vehicle and building the diorama, plus working on the setup. Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. Yo, I'm following a, a few uh, Instagram accounts where they're, they're using very simple dioramas. Often it's just a, a plywood, which is painted grey. Uh, and then they put model cars on this. Uh, I think it's a bit larger scale though. It's uh, 1 to 32 or something like that. And then they put it in, on, in front of their house, like on a driveway or something. And, and they put this model of a, of a Lamborghini Countach or, or whatever. Uh, and it looks just super realistic. So I, I got kind of I want to do this, <laughs> but I want to do it with the small uh, HO scale cars I have. Uh, and um, so we're starting off by building a car. This is uh, an Opel truck from 1915 uh, from a, a manufacturer called Architect. So we're starting with that and then we're building a, a very simple street diorama, which is uh, thought to be universal for all kind of situations. and. Lastly, we will make a, a go outside, make a photo setup, check out what angles and distances is required to, to get a, a nice looking photo. So let's get started. The vehicle we're going to build is a super detailed Opel truck from 1914, made by Architec. In the upper right hand corner, you now have a link to the Architec website, where you can buy the truck and have more information about it. The kit contains from resin molded parts as well as etched parts in brass and decals and of course a detailed assembly instruction. Parts molded in resin always comes with a level of mold burr. This has to be removed. Easiest way to do this is by using a scalpel. Sand if necessary. This model didn't have much mold burr, so it was rather quick. First thing we're gonna do now is to put some primer onto the resin and the etched parts. For this I use an oil-based solvent-based color. It's Humbrol number 113. Now, the color could be really anything, but I prefer to use a brown paint for this. You can also use your favorite acrylic primer if you know that it really sticks to resin and etched parts. I have been a bit unlucky finding one so far. So if you have, please post a comment in the comment field. Once I have the paint on the mixing board, I thin it using turpentine, which I found to be the very best thinner for the Humbrol paints. Making a mix here until I have a paint mix, which is floaty, does not give any marks after the paintbrush, but anyway gives a good coverage over the surface. I use a piece of sticky rubber to hold the resin part in place on the holding stick whilst painting. Then I paint it with a paintbrush. You can of course also airbrush if you like, but I find airbrushing with solvent based uh, paints uh, a bit nasty. So look here how much details are already showing. Oh, this is really nice. Leave this to dry now properly overnight. Then it's time for the top coat. I choose uh, Humbrol number 60. This is a red paint. I thin that as well using turpentine on my mixing board. And then it's just to start paint the entire truck. Right now I got a bit too much paint on the first section here. I will even that out. Yeah. And for the black parts under the truck, this is uh, Humbrol number 32. And then some brass parts here. If you like, you can of course use acrylic paints for the top coat. Resin kits model like this with the etched parts 
I typically assemble it using fast set glue. This one's from Pacer Technology. It's uh, really good. And then it's time for some of those etched parts. Some of them should be bent to shape. This is the etched part for the rear wheel suspension. Yeah. And double them like this. Yeah, cool. Now it's just to glue it in place. I glue these parts as well using fast set glue. This is the part for the rear axle to which we will fit the wheels. So it is snapped in place into the suspension like that. All right, now our, the, all the chassis parts in place, except the wheels. Oh, it looks kind of nice. I'll just glue the wheels in place too. And the cooler, the grill with the opal text. Very nice. Let's now do some basic weathering here. I'm thinking to add some pin wash. Then I use uh, Abteilung ABT080, which is a brown color. I put it on a piece of paper to get the lean seed oil out. And then I take that paint and thin it into odorless turpentine until I have a nice wash for rivets and for the plankings here on the sides of the flatbed. Now leave that to dry for an hour, then take a flat brush, some clean odorless thinner, and then wipe off that wash, which have ended up on top of the planks. We just want this wash in between. So, all right, then we have completed the truck. Then let's move over to the diorama. The base material in the diorama will be a 50 mm thick styrofoam. The street surface will be made also from styrofoam, but this is uh, something manufactured by Skandor. It's 2.2 mm thick and used under those modern wooden floors. So they're already in this thickness. Check in your local DIY store for these. I will glue them in place on top of that 50 mm styrofoam using PVA glue. This is also called wood glue or white glue. It has many names. I picked this one up at Hornbach. It's a PVA B glue called Sikabon 530. But if you're in the US, you're probably more common to Elmer's glue all tight bond original. If you're in Germany, you will probably be looking for Punal and in Spanish spoken countries, it's called Cola Blanca. Squeeze some glue out on the area where you want to have your road surface and then smoothen it out using a wide paintbrush. With a glue in place, it's just to put the road surface on top. I put some steel scale and a, a weight to keep it really tight onto the, the base board. I put some more glue next to the road surface, smoothen that out as well using a paintbrush. And then I sprinkle in chinsilla sand or beach sand or whatever sand you have available. This will look like it's the side, the sand or the side of the road. And to make it stick properly, I have here a mix of water and isopropanol. So it's uh, like nine parts water and one part isopropanol. The purpose with the isopropanol is to reduce the water tension. In this eyedropper, I have a mix of white glue, PVA glue, uh, that's it, and water. So it's one part PVA glue and three parts water. Wipe off any glue which ended up on the road surface using a paper tissue. Leave that to dry now properly and then we will paint the field next to the road which will be painted in 
burnt umber brown mix with a portion of white to get a almost chocolate uh, brown paint which will make up the foundation for our field i'm just spreading this with a wide brush this is a low level of artistic work while that is drying, we can focus on making some of those cracks in the road. They are typically, at least in my area, located around the center of the street and in the edges. You can peel off some of the edges and fill with sand. Like here, it's a, just a bit of a cracks going on here. Let's now mix a dark brown or dark gray color. So we're using the same paint we have for the field and adding white and black to that. And then we end up with something like this. We will use uh, later here, uh, I found in the, in the hobby shop a perfect set for this. It was actually called the perfect set, it's something uh, noch is marketing it's item 60817 perfect set road and i must admit this was a really nice set including a instruction dvd it's a roller with the sponge rollers which gives a bit of a texture to the surface it's a kind of asphalt gray paint uh, with some texture in it too and this one I really really liked it's uh, uh, templates to make uh, road markings which otherwise is very hard but this one was laser cut so I really like that I pour some of that uh, gray asphalt paint into my tray and wetten the roller and then start to paint the road. Now the grey paint we painted the street with initially will only be shown in the cracks which we made with the scalpel. So I paint the road twice using this roller and the grey asphalt paint from, from the Noch kit or the Noch set, perfect set road. And it starts to look really nice. I was thinking to have a zebra crossing here as well. Could be nice. And it's very nice with these templates. Laser cut is the thing. I will be very moderate detailing the fields here around the roads, but I will anyway put some static grass there. And for that purpose I use static grass glue and I typically cover areas of the field with grass glue, not all of it, it's maybe half. And then for these areas I use a rather short grass, it's a 2.5 millimeter meadow green. I often get asked how I get my grass to stand up so nicely and I can tell you that uh, some of the trick is to not overfill the applicator, use just a few centimeters of grass in the applicator and then hold it very close to the surface you're applying the grass to and you'll see that it will be a success. Now I paint the remaining areas with the static grass and apply 6mm beige mixed with light green. We will now remove grass which is lying down in the surface but not really fixed to the ground. This is made using a stiff uh, wide brush and a vacuum cleaner like this. Last action on this diorama will be to weather the road slightly. Here I'm using a light grey pastel chalk uh, and I will grind off some powder from it and apply that to the road surface using a makeup sponge. And I apply it in uh, streaks like this, like where the cars travel, the wheels of the cars. 
then if you like you can smoothen this out using your fingers once you have applied like this uh, to get uh, the edges a bit softer and there's no reason to overdo this it will give a nice effect anyway let's go outside now to try this all right here in this example i have the houses about 100 meter away from my diorama this is what the setup looked like the camera is approximately two feet or 60 centimeters away from the car the truck however i wanted the background to be a bit closer here's just 40 meters then this photo is done with a zoom lens at two decimeter from the object here i decreased the distance to the object down to only two inches five centimeters and the house in the background is still 40 meters away and now it starts to look pretty good well i have to work more on this all right yeah i must admit it was a bit more of a challenge <laughs> to get the perspectives right when you have houses and structures nearby uh, in combination with your miniatures you know having a, a distant forest line is it's a breeze you can succeed with that any day but you know i have to work a bit more on this but you know as summer comes along now hopefully with the spring in between uh, it will be more time to work on this if you liked this video tutorial and want to help others to find it, please give it a thumbs up. Did you know that this video channel is made possible because a few of you viewers are supporting the channel? So think of this as your you know, low-cost magazine subscription and get over to Patreon and set up a support account there. Or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe, enable the little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya.